Hi, in this session, we're going to tell you about Epicor Automation Studio, powered by Bricado. Now, this offers self-service integration and automation for accounting. My name is Elizabeth Kane, and I'm a senior manager with Epicor Product Marketing. And joining me today to show you a demo is Andy Dankin, Kinetic Solutions Engineer. Hannah Willett, Applications Engineer with Stephen Gold Corporation, stated, I've used a fair number of enterprise level integration platforms and custom solutions and Automation Studio outshines them all in terms of simplicity and effectiveness. It has a low barrier to entry and the ROI was immediate with our first project. The main functions of Automation Studio are divided into three categories. First, you have business automation, also known as robotic process automation. That's the 24 seven lights out automation that does not require human intervention. And the example here is an automatic notification of kinetic contract items about to expire. Then you have system integrations, such as automatically syncing data between kinetic and Salesforce. Mercado offers over 1,000 platform connectors that they develop and maintain for popular apps and platforms. Add to that even more connectors offered by the Ricardo community, along with well over half a million recipes, which is what we call the integrations and automations. On top of that, Epicor provides our platform and module connectors that we develop and maintain in Automation Studio with every Epicor release for our customers, along with recipes curated exclusively for them called industry templates. The third category is activity workflow, which is an automation that requires human interaction. An example of an activity workflow here is a kinetic purchase order over a buy limit that triggers an email or text message sent to a manager. The email contains approve and reject buttons that send the approval back into Kinetic. Today we're going to take a look at how Automation Studio can build an approval workflow for AP invoices. To start with, let's take a look at AP invoice entry. So in my example, what we're going to do here is we're going to set up some rules where if an AP invoice is greater than, say, $500, then for that particular vendor, if they have a limit set to them of over $500, then we want to place the order on, place the invoice on hold. We then want Automation Studio to send out an email to somebody in accounting to go in and approve or reject that AP invoice. Now with Automation Studio, we're going to build some rules in there for the approval, for the rejection, and to view the AP invoice. So let's start with an invoice. So you note here that I, I have some user-defined fields for my hold reason, hold date, approval, reject reason, and approval, reject date. Go ahead and enter in our supplier, which is Office Supply Depot. We'll set in an invoice date. We'll make that equal to today. We'll give it an invoice number, 54321-1, and an invoice amount of $963. So one of our rules is telling me here that the invoice has exceeded the vendor limit, so it's going to be placed on hold pending approval. So you can see here that it put the invoice on hold. It set a hold reason, a vendor limit hold, and it set a hold date. Now let's go into Automation Studio and see how we would process that approval, right? So let's go into our recipes and we'll pull up AP invoice approval. Now we have two recipes here, one that is going to be listening for a webhook or a link uh, from the email when you click on an approve, reject, or view AP invoice, and it will trigger and update the record in Epicor. This recipe here is where we're going to be doing some of the logic, right? So we're going to start with a new or updated AP invoice in Kinetic, right? So again, we make our connection to our application, and then from there, we access AP invoices, right? Which is the record type. And again, you can go in here and you can access all the various different tables that are in Epicor. Now I'm gonna be retrieving some fields, the supplier number, the invoice number, the invoice date, 
the invoice amount, the invoice held flag, I have some user defined fields that I'll be able to update the group ID and the um, document invoice supplier amount. Again, we'll be accessing multiple companies here. So Epic 03 is my company. Now I'm going to check to see if that invoice held flag is set to true. So you saw earlier in the screen how uh, we placed it on hold. And if it's true, then we're going to run it through this logic here. So first of all, we're, we're actually connecting to Epicor, our kinetic application, and then we're accessing the supplier record. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to use the supplier name in the email, right? And then from here, we'll go into, uh, we're setting up a, a variable for the approve or reject date. So we're setting that to today's date. And then we're calling another recipe, an email recipe that allows me to go in and to configure an email with buttons and, um, and you know, how you can react to those buttons or what reaction would happen when those buttons are selected. So first of all, we indicate who it's going to. We can set a banner title. And in here, I'm setting up a message. Now, um, this is done using HTML. I don't have to do that. And all I wanted to do with the HTML is bold out the invoice number, which is coming from step one. And step one, as you notice here, is a, um, I'm using a data pill. And step one here is where I'm grabbing the AP invoice. I'm also uh, grabbing the input voice supplier amount, which is coming from step one, and the supplier name, which I gathered here in step three. And again, using a data pill, dragging it and dropping it in there. Now, I have three buttons that I'm configuring. The first one is the approve button. So it's going to say approve on it. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking that URL or the webhook from the recipe that I showed you previously, and I'm passing it the group ID, the invoice number, the invoice held flag, whether it's true or false. So if I approve it, it's going to be set to false. I'm also getting the supplier number. I'm going to put in an approve or reject reason, and the approve reason will be approved. And then I'm going to put in today's date for the approve reject date. My second button is the reject button. So everything is the same here, except for you'll notice that the invoice held flag is set to true. And finally, my third button is for viewing the AP invoice in the AP invoice tracker, which is a read-only uh, screen, right? Again, what this is is a deep link uh, to Kinetic, which will open up AP invoice tracker. And all I'm doing is I'm passing it the invoice number, right, to open up that, open up the invoice. So let's go ahead and let's test out this recipe. Now, again, you can set this to run automatically, right? If you want to, you can trigger it to occur uh, every five minutes, 15 minutes. Again, it could be real time. Also, the nice thing about this is it lets you know whether it's successful or if it failed. And if it failed, it would identify which step and what the error is. So you can easily go back in and debug. Now, if we walk through these steps, you can see that I'm bringing in information about the AP invoice. There it is. Uh, it's $963. 54321-1, the vendor limit hold. I'm checking to see if that invoice health flag is set to true, and it is set to true. And if I go into here to get the supplier information, you can see that it brought in Office Supply Depot. It's setting up my approval reject reason for today's date, and it sends out an email. So let's go in, take a look at our email. So you can see here, uh, this is friendly to all types of devices, whether you're looking at it on a desktop, a tablet, or a mobile device. And in here, you can see that I have the AP invoice 54321-1, the amount of $963, and the supplier office supply depot. Now, as an approver, I would typically want to view that, uh, that uh, invoice first, right? And the nice thing about this is it brings me into AP invoice tracker now. Because I was logged in, it didn't ask me to sign in, but if you weren't logged in, it will automatically re require you to so sign in. Now, the nice thing about this is it's read-only, so there's no nothing that can happen here. They can view it. And then once they make their decision, you can go in and approve it, right? And now if I go back in and I hit the refresh button, you'll see that the invoice is taken off a hold. It puts in the approve reason called approve and it puts in the approval date. Now that's an example of using Automation Studio to build an activity workflow for approvals for AP invoices.